everyone, welcome to the video tutorial for the Infinity Scarf or Snood. You can see Melba wearing her large size one here. So if you like this tutorial, please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Bye. Okay, so for this tutorial, you'll need some velvet yarn. I've got this soft grey here in a, it's a bulky to super bulky. So um, you can use any velvet yarn. I'm using this quite quite uh, quite bulky one. You'll need a crochet hook that suits your yarn. I'm using a size 7, 7 millimeter. You'll need a darning needle with a large eye or an eye large enough to fit your yarn through. You'll need some scissors and you'll need a tape measure to measure the length of the uh, infinity scarf that you want to make. Um, and that will depend on whether you want it to be a snood as well. So you can make it long enough so it's just an infinity scarf, or you can make it long enough so it um, sort of comes up over the over the, your cat's head. So a tape measure will be invaluable. So let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to make a few notes on the sizing. So in the description box, you'll notice that I've mentioned that this pattern you can make um, three different sizes. So this is the small that I've made previously and this is the large. And today on camera I'm going to make a medium. Okay, so the size that you or the width that you choose to make and just to give you an idea for these ones, the large for this one uh, with the yarn I've used and the, knee, the hook I'm using is around seven centimeters wide. For the small it's around four and a half centimeters wide. Okay, so my medium is obviously going to fall somewhere in the middle of those two. Now, the width that you make will de depend on the look that you're going for, for your cat. Okay, so this small one here is just an infinity scarf. So it, it wraps around twice around Melba's um, neck, and it's just an infinity scarf. Okay, this one here, the larger size I've made, so it can be an infinity scarf, but plus... If it's a little bit cooler, she can use it as a snood. So um, obviously not so it covers the ears, but it can just uh, sit just a little bit over the head so it's got a slight hood effect. And that's the larger, why I make that, made that larger size. Now the medium obviously will be somewhere in between these two, but you can choose which width you want depending on your cat size, depending on the look that you're going for. So, like I said, I'm going to show you the medium today. Now, for the small, the stitches that you need for rows one and row three, so there's only three rows in this project, no matter what size you're making. For rows one and row three, you use single crochets. In the large one, rows one and rows three are double crochets. I'm not demonstrating these sizes on camera today, so... Um, I'm going to show you a medium, which is using half double crochets in rows one and row three. So if you want to make either the large or the small, you'll need to substitute where I'm using half double crochets for either single crochet or double crochet. Okay, so let's get started with the medium size, which I'll demonstrate on camera today. So slip knot onto your hook. And then you'll need to work out how long you need your foundation chain. Okay, so um, for Melba, her neck is around 24 centimeters. And I allow, usually for most scarves, I allow 25 centimeter circumference. Now, you'll need to at least double that. So for Melba, that would be 50 centimeters for my foundation chain if I'm working around a 25 centimeter neck circumference. And then I allow quite a bit extra. So... Um, for example, this one here, this larger one, is the chain was around 60 centimeters that I made. So that was doubling it plus adding about 10 centimeters. And it, like, it's not an exact science. You'll just need to work out how you would like it to fit. So this one fits a bit looser and the smaller one fits a bit more tightly. This one here I did at 50 centimeters, which was doubling her neck circumference. And it fits, it goes over her head and, and doubles, but it fits quite tightly around the neck. Or not, it's not tight, but it just fits quite snugly around the neck. This one is, is looser, and as I said, I can, I can raise it up as a, as a hood if I want to. Um, so, I'm going to, for this medium size, I'm also going to make it so I can 
um, work it into a little hood if I want to for her. So I'm going to chain 60 centimeters and your chain will be different um, according to the size of your cat. So you chain to where you need it to be, which is at least doubling their neck circumference and possibly um, a bit extra. Okay, so make your chain. Now you'll also need to make sure that you have an odd number of chains. Okay, so multiples of two plus one. Okay, so once you've uh, once you've counted all your chains, just make sure that there's an odd number. Um, so you know you can add one or subtract one if you need to. So keep going up to your the length that you need. Count the number of chains that you've got and make sure that it's an odd number. Okay. And I'll meet you back here at the end of my chain. Okay, I've done my 60 centimeter chain. And it's 59 chains. So I've got my odd number. So now you're going to make your loop. Okay, so make sure that your chain isn't twisted. And then you're going to slip stitch into the first chain. So just yarn over, pull through. You can work into both loops or just one loop like I did. Okay, now depending on which size you're making, you're either going to chain one for the small size or here you're going to chain two for the medium and large. So I'm going to chain two. Now at this point you can work in your tail. When I'm working in the round like this, I don't tend to because... Um, I like to just make sure that when I sew or weave in my end at the at the end of the project, um, I've created a nice, neat and even join here. So I tend not to work them in at this point um, for these projects, but you can you can certainly do so. So you've got your chain. It's either chain one for a small size, chain two for a large or a medium, and then you're going to yarn over or. Um, not yarn over if you're doing a single crochet. So I'm making the half double crochet. So where, where I'm making half double crochets, for a small you're making single crochet, for a large you're making double crochets. Okay, so in this case I'm making um, half double crochets, the medium size. So I'm going to work in my row one, half double crochet in each chain all the way along. Okay, so all the way round to the other end of this row. Keep working either your single crochet, half double crochet or double crochet in each chain all the way around and I'll meet you when we get back around to this other side. Okay so I'm just placing my last half double crochet in this first row in that last chain in my row and then you'll just find your first stitch and slip stitch to join the start and the end of your row okay so that's row one so you will have made um, a row of either single crochet half double crochet like I did or double crochet for the large size okay so for no matter what size you're making, row two is the same, okay? So for everyone, row two, chain three. And then um, at this point, your your chain will count as a stitch. So don't work back into the, the stitch underneath the chain, okay? Um, yarn over, double crochet into the third stitch along. Okay, chain one skip one and then double crochet into the third along okay so you're going to start to make these little windows so basically it's um, double crochet chain one double crochet after skipping one okay so that's the pattern that will follow moving along chaining one I skip one and then double crochet into the next stitch along chain one skip one double crochet into the next stitch along so you'll do that all the way around so chaining one skipping one double crochet into the next stitch creating this little open weave pattern now why 
I've done it like that is it just allows it to fold quite nicely. It allows it a little bit more flexibility through the center there. So keep going. Finish off your row two. And I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, so keep on going. Pause here and I'll meet you back at the other end. Okay, so I'm just finishing off my row two here. I've just got one double crochet to place. Right, it, because we we um, did odd numbers at the beginning, you'll finish off at this right next to it, the stitch right next to the chain. Okay, and that will just give you a, a nice, neat finish at the seam there. Okay. So the chain and your double crochet will come together. It'll be a slightly wider stitch than the others, but you won't you won't really see it. So then find your first stitch and slip stitch to finish your row. So um, maybe you can see on camera, or you'll see on your own project. So the chain and the the last double crochet are in adjacent stitches so it's just slightly thicker than all the others but it, it, it that allows you to um, see the seam the least okay it's the neatest way to finish this off okay and then you've just got one row left so you'll either chain one if you're making the small you'll chain two if you're making the medium or large and then you'll just repeat the the row one so for the small you'll be repeating a single crochet row for the medium like I'm doing you'll be uh, repeating a half double crochet row and for the large you'll be um, repeating a double crochet row so go ahead and finish off your row three now when you're when you're working into the chain you're working into the space okay so whatever stitch you're doing don't when you're working into the chain where the chain is you're working into the space okay so then you'll move along and you'll work into the stitch above your double crochet in the previous row and then you'll work into the chain space okay And then that'll just help to keep those little windows nice and open. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Sorry, I didn't quite explain that that well. So you put your first stitch above the double crochet. Your next stitch goes into the chain space, above the double crochet, into the chain space. And then you'll just keep working those along all the way until you finish your row three. So I'll meet you at the end of row three. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end of my row three, the last, the last row in this project. So I'll just place my last few half double crochets around. So placing one above that last, that last uh, chain. If you're sorry, that last uh, double crochet. If you remember the chain and the double crochet are together, so you place one above that that uh, double crochet, and then finding the first stitch and slip stitch and there you're done so yarn over pull through take your scissors and snip off your end and then all that's left is just weaving in these two ends okay so take your darning needle and thread and then you may need to like I said before why I don't weave in my uh, sorry work in my ends I prefer to weave them in for these projects in the round is just sometimes what I need to do is just and you can you can do this when you work it in too but I just like to make sure it's nice and neat across the um, the bottom there so I like to just sew it in Make sure that I've got it relatively flat along the edge there. And with this yarn, it's quite forgiving, so it, uh, it doesn't matter too much. But just weave in your end. You can go backwards and forwards a couple of times. Just make sure you don't go back underneath the same loop. You'll come 
either to the side of it or over that loop and then back through. And I just go across the side. So just yeah, just weave in your ends however you you do that, and then you'll snip off the excess. Just make sure it's nice and secure in there. And then snipping off your excess. And so go ahead and weave in your, your second end as well. And I'll meet you back here just to finish off. Okay, so there you have it. I've got my small, medium and large made now. You can see the, the difference in the sizes comparatively. So my, uh, my medium size has come out about, it's about five centimeters, maybe just over five centimeters. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, we'd love to see photos of your cat wearing his or her infinity scarf or snood. So please send those along to either catventurous.community uh, at gmail.com. That's via email. Or you can tag us on social media on Instagram. You can tag us at catventurous.crochet. You can also see the description box below for where to find us on, on uh, different social media. And uh, yeah, enjoy your enjoy crocheting and um, love to see how yours turns out. So please, uh, please send those along and uh, hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs> That's a bit smelly, you. Hi everyone, welcome to the video tutorial for... <laughs> okay. Okay, honey. Okay. It's okay. <laughs>